Hi, Dr. Trotman, infectious disease specialist at Cox Health. It's the end of October, and um, I'm going to talk to you today about our COVID vaccine boosters. It's it's a good time right now. It's it's uh, uh, been an amazing uh, recovery uh, in our region and across the U.S. in the pandemic. Uh, cases are down, hospitalizations are down, deaths are decreasing, and uh, the majority of this is due to immunity in our population, both natural immunity and vaccine, and this vaccine rollout's been incredible. Um, it's the end of October. We've been vaccinating uh, people for about 10 months. Uh, we now have the recommendations from the CDC on boosters, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the boosters do, why we do them, and uh, who does and maybe doesn't need a booster, and then what um, what are maybe some of the side effects and what you can expect after your boosters. And what we know with, with any vaccine is our immunity is really high uh, right after that vaccine, and then it's going to wane over time. Now, you do have some degree of immunity that is imprinted in your immune system, sort of deep memory cells, and these can respond to infection, but they take a few days. Um, to, to ramp up, to mobilize those troops if you get exposed to, to this SARS-CoV-2 virus. So what we do with boosters is we try to prime the immune system. We give you a little bit of that spike protein and it just tops off the tank with those antibodies, both in your blood and maybe even in your nose and in your mucous membranes where that virus is likely to land. But the vaccine doesn't prevent people from testing positive. If somebody has COVID and coughs in your face, you're gonna inhale the virus and you're gonna test positive. The good news is if you have memory imprinted in your T cells and your B cells, you can mount a good immune response and, and it'll get over it quicker. The booster will just prime it up, get those antibodies in your, in your nose and in your blood ready to fight quicker. So that's why we're looking at boosters because we are seeing our natural immunity and our vaccine induced immunity start to wane a little bit. And we wanna just top that off until we can get control of this. So fast forward to late October and we're blessed with, uh, with the opportunity to give booster vaccines. And these boosters are really for two groups of people. People who are unlikely to have responded to the first series of vaccines. So people with immunocompromising conditions, they, they maybe don't respond to any type of vaccine very well. And, and those are the people we see sick in the hospital. So those people and for people who are likely to do poorly if they get COVID-19. So people with medical conditions, um, things like diabetes, obesity, heart, lung, kidney disease. That's the group of people who should receive the vaccine. So we have a slide from the CDC and it's going to explain to you those two distinctions between who should get it and who can get it. Now, for me as a healthy, fairly healthy healthcare worker in this middle age group, I'm in the can get the vaccine. And so you're going to want to talk to your doctor about these pre-existing conditions. Um, are you one of these people who should or one of these people who can get the vaccine? Then the big question is if I'm a can get the vaccine, um, what are some of the side effects? What's going to factor into this decision? And so what we've learned from these uh, booster studies is that a lot of the side effects are the same with the third dose of the RNA vaccine as they are for the second and the first. There's a little bit of nuance and we're going to include some slides for you to look at um, that have some of the side effect profiles. Um, in general, they're well tolerated. We're not seeing any serious events. Um, when they first did the booster doses for Moderna, they used the full dose. Um, now for the uh, CDC and the FDA guidance, it's going to be half the dose of the Moderna. So I anticipate we'll see a little bit less of the reactogenicity, the serious, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the warmth and tenderness and fever and fatigue. But you can anticipate some of those side effects um, may be similar to your, your second dose. So the next slide that we'll talk about is this individual risk assessment. And it's something you're going to want to talk to your doctor. It's that shared decision making. You're going to look at your age, your medical conditions. You're going to look at the side effect profile of the vaccine. And we'll have some links to those. And, and then you're going to make a decision um, really based on your own risk. So now we'll talk a little bit about each vaccine. Each one does have its own benefits and its own potential risks. So we'll start with the Johnson & Johnson or the Janssen vaccine. That's the live adenovirus vaccine. That was the one-time dose. We know that people's immunity have waned. It's still protecting people well from serious uh, illness and from, and from death. But uh, that booster is recommended at two months from your first dose. That's an important distinction. Um, that sort of signature side effect with Janssen or Johnson & Johnson was that, that odd clotting and low platelets. It's not associated with the mRNA vaccines. 
and it was seen mostly in younger women. So it's something for younger women to think about, talk with their doctor. Um, they may or may not want to receive another Janssen vaccine. The CDC said you can mix and match. So their second dose might actually be with a Moderna or a Pfizer vaccine, um, although the risk is maybe one in a million of these um, weird clotting and pla low platelet counts. So something to remember for Johnson & Johnson. And then we have the two mRNA vaccines. And what we learned from some of the booster data was that Moderna, it results in some soreness. It maybe has a little more uh, local side effects and what we call reactogenicity, um, more than the Pfizer for that third dose. Now the vaccine booster in the Moderna is gonna be half the dose, 50 micrograms of the mRNA. So I suspect the side effects will be a little bit less. One of those things you might wanna think about with Moderna vaccine, like we said earlier, young healthy uh, men seem to have a risk, maybe one in 50,000 of myocarditis. It's self-limited. It's far less frequent than the myocarditis associated with COVID infection. Do you want the risk of what you know or the risk of what you don't know? So I tell people, yeah, there is some risk, mRNA vaccines and, and myocarditis, but it's far less than the risk of, of an infection. So those are the kind of things you want to think about. We'll have some links to some slides maybe that detail uh, some, of the, uh, some of these side effects and you can look through, but it really comes down to a conversation with your doctor. We vaccinated uh, 200 million people in the U.S. almost, and, and, it, and it does appear to be safe. And I don't foresee any uh, unforeseen uh, concerns or consequences, uh, uh, adverse reactions to sneak up on us with these boosters. I think, uh, like I said, uh, everybody's going to have a different response. Um, you may want to, you may fall into that group of who needs it or who can get it. And you may even fall in a group who says, I feel like I'm young and healthy and I don't want a booster today. Uh, and, um, and that's a reasonable uh, conversation to have with your doctor. So I hope this helps, helps clarify some of the process and some of the questions. Um, there will be more information to come um, and we'll be uh, trying to roll out data and more opportunities for you to get your booster.